Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum everyone, inshallah, you're all doing well. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the fourth lesson in this course, or four episode, however you want to word it. And I hope that this one will be one of the most beneficial, inshallah. The reason I say this is because I genuinely feel that Many are being failed in this area, especially when it comes to representation online. Muslims are not always living up to the standards that we have been told to set for ourselves. And as a result, giving false impressions or neglecting this topic area's level of importance. So I hope today goes a long way towards fixing that, I guess. Last time we were here, we focused on our practice covering topics of wudu and guzo. If you haven't watched it or any of the other previous episodes, I would advise you to go back and do that. And if you want to get the most out of this lesson, my advice is to get yourself a pen and a notepad and take notes, inshallah. A little bit of a story time just to set the tone of this episode, inshallah. As a non-Muslim who was very observant, one of the first things I noticed when meeting a genuine practicing Muslim wasn't the dawah of their words or them verbally conveying the message, but rather it was their character and their manners. It was kindness complemented by confidence. It was how they presented themselves, their hospitality. Um, like I said, their manners, their etiquettes. They were unlike anything I had seen from people to be honest. And when they were doing these things, you could see that it came with an effortlessness and a sense of it coming from a genuine and sincere place, you know, Allah knows best. But it was really refreshing, to say the least. I cannot remember word for word the conversations we had that day. I do remember some of the questions, of course, because, you know, we were really trying to put them on the spot. Although I did less talking and more more listening but what I do remember vividly is how they carried themselves and how well we were treated and even when we look at today right we are living in an era of influencers so people's actions count you know the actions of others are being observed by people and a lot of the times in the masses. So it's no secret that many often incline towards uh, influences and certain behaviours. And sometimes they are behaviours that take us further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than closer. May Allah azawajal protect us from this. I mean, but let's take a look at what it says in the Quran. There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an excellent example to follow for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. And subhanAllah, I think this is where we genuinely go wrong. We forget the guidance given to us by Allah um, or we're yet to learn. But we forget that the best of examples is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we are so fixated with these modern day influencers. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't great Muslims online. There are many, subhanAllah. But I just feel that we are too quick to neglect the most important appointed example. So previously, we're focused on belief. We're focused on practice, which we will go back to. We'll sort of rotate between the three. But the third is character because focusing on character is so incredibly important so this is going to be like a sort of introduction style with general tips on how to improve but as we go along we will look at etiquettes expected of a muslim in different scenarios or environments you know just how to deal with different situations in the best of manners so generally, going forward, our goal should be, as Muslims, to excel in our manners and in our character, taking the Prophet ﷺ as the best of our examples. But why should we do this? What is the benefit of excelling in our manners and in our character? Well, we have been advised that there's nothing heavier than good character that will be put in the scale of deeds on the day of resurrection. And that's narrated in Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi. And that the best of people and character will be seated closest to the Prophet on the day of resurrection, subhanAllah. 
We can find evidence of this in this hadith that is classed as authentic by Sheikh Albani, where the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Among the dearest of you to me and the closest of you to me on the day of resurrection will be those who are best in manners. This has also been translated to character. And it was also narrated that the Prophet وسلم, was neither coarse nor loud and he used to say, the best of you is the one who has the best character. May Allah Azawajal make us amongst these people. Amen. So it's necessary that we develop a character and a behaviour that is in accordance with what's in the Quran and Sunnah. It will take time, of course, to get to know the Quran and the Sunnah, so you will develop as you go along, but it has to start with knowing its importance. That even though certain behaviours are being more normalised in the world and online, that it's funny to drop an inappropriate joke, that it's funny to see someone being made a fool of. But in Islam, there is a standard for everything that we do. We don't just fall at the unbefitting trends. We don't just tell ourselves it's okay because everyone else is doing it. But rather, we are amongst those who strive to have character of dignity and honour given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one that weighs heavy on the scales. Hassan al-Basri, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The definition of a good character is doing acts of kindness, refraining from causing harm, and having a cheerful countenance, a cheerful expression. Al-Qadi Iyad said, It means mixing with the people with a kind and cheerful character, being friendly and compassionate towards them, putting up with them and showing forbearance and patience towards them in times of hardship refraining from being arrogant towards them or mistreating them. I'm sure everyone here has a good grasp of what it means to be of good character and to have good manners. But Islam is about perfecting that, inshallah. So let's get into some of the general things we can do to work on our character. Before we do that, where should we start? Where does everything begin? What should we be thinking of at this moment? Well, we should take a moment to renew our intentions, to remember why we're here, doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of our own souls, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, So invoke Allah, being sincere to him in religion, though the disbelievers dislike it. Meaning, this is what we should be doing. We should be having that sincerity by worshipping none but him and by doing good deeds for the sake of Allah, despite what people may think. Our intentions and sincerity needs to be kept in constant check. It might be the case that we start off sincere, but perhaps midway through, due to praise from people, let's say, we forget ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. I mean, but it happens, you know. So it's incredibly important that we keep check of our ikhlas, our sincerity, constantly through everything that we do, inshallah, to ensure that it is the most sincere that it can be. It was narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who lets the people hear of his good deeds intentionally to win their praise, Allah will let the people know his real intention on the day of resurrection. And he who does good things in public to show off and win the praise of the people, Allah will disclose his real intention and humiliate him. SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us from this, I mean. Therefore, to attain success is to develop a mindset that seeks Allah's pleasure. We need to have remembrance enough to have our Creator in mind and what we say and what we do constantly. And that will come with habit building. And as new Muslims, that's going to take some time. So, for example, your prayers, dhikr, Remembering Allah's names, reading books that invoke remembrance of Allah, reading and reciting the Quran, learning about Allah to keep our Iman in a good state, to keep our remembrance in a good state, inshallah. And hopefully as a result, that will mean being in a great state of sincerity, inshallah. Another general topic that I think helps improve our character is developing an attitude of gratitude. 
And I think this can be really hard for a lot of people these days, especially the youth, male or guide them. I mean, it can be really hard for those raised with, you know, the fairy tales of the West. It's old stories that we can gain anything, that we can achieve anything just by ourselves, you know. It leads to developing this entitled mindset. And if we were to take a moment to look around and be honest with ourselves, we would see that actually we have a lot already. Despite what we don't have, we have a lot already. Stuff that we take for granted daily. Things like our heartbeat, our eyesight, breathing, our ability to hear, speak, walk, to feel, to recognise God, to have a legit layout to life through Islam. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, And whoever is grateful, his gratitude is only for the benefit of himself. And whoever is ungrateful, then indeed my Lord is free of need and generous. It's not Allah who is in need of our acts of good or our worship, but rather it is us who are in need. Allah tells us that he is bountiful in and of himself. Even if no one were to worship him, his greatness does not depend on anyone. And we can see this in the following hadith. And I have to say, I'm taking snippets out of a much longer hadith to make the point that I'm making, inshallah. But it says, Allah says, O my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, mankind and jinn alike, were all to be as pious as the most pious among you, that it would not add to my dominion in the slightest. O my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, mankind and jinn alike, were all to be as evil as the most evil among you, that would not detract from my dominion in the slightest. O my servants, these are deeds which I am recording for you, and I will judge you according to them. So whoever finds something good, let him praise Allah, and whoever finds otherwise, let him blame no one but himself. The things that Allah tells us to do, we do for his sake because we recognise him, because we recognise his guidance. But ultimately, it is us who are the beneficiaries, subhanAllah. So we should definitely keep this in mind. But ultimately, it is important that we keep it real with ourselves. We are not going to get everything that we want in life, despite what some may tell you. Some people will get a good spouse, some people will get a bad one, and both of them are a test. Some of us will get great wealth, and some of us won't get as much, but both are a test. And the list goes on. Whatever state we are in, we should be in one of gratitude, because the facts are most likely we have more than most. I'm sure if many had the chance to be given our lives and our lifestyles, they would take it. So being in constant awareness of this is powerful and inshallah something that will ultimately result in us gaining closeness to Allah, inshallah. Another important example that I think can help keep our character in check is the topic of hope and fear of Allah. Now, usually this is made a very controversial statement by those who either lack in knowledge or who are non-Muslim. Already, we have spoke about the potential reward for good choices and good character. But surely the balance is to know the consequences of having bad character and making bad choices, right? We find that many outsiders lack that healthy dose of fear of God and they accuse God or Allah of not having love and compassion because of this, which is completely wrong and doesn't even make sense. Now, I'm going to give you a very worldly example, very insignificant, but just to try and explain what I mean. If we take our children as an example, our children find security in us, inshallah. They know our expectations of them. They know that we love them. And as a result of this, if they respect us, of course, they would make choices according to the standards that we set for them, according to the expectations that we have for them. And if they do anything that goes outside of those boundaries set, something that is wrong, of course, then a punishment usually follows. Therefore, anything that could lead to our disappointment, they will try and avoid, inshallah, again, if they respect us. Them knowing that there are punishments, them knowing that we could be disappointed is a part of what prevents them from making 
those choices. And the reality is that we should all have that, young and old, youth and parents. We should all have that awareness when it comes to Allah. We should know his expectations and we should be shy to do anything that disappoints him. Allah says in the Quran, and thus we have made you a justly balanced community that you will be witnesses over the people and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be a witness over you. And it is referenced in Tafsir ibn Kathir or Razi's comments on the verse saying, the justly balance in reality is the furthest point between two extremes. There is no doubt that the two poles of excess and extravagance are destructive. So to be moderate in character is to be the furthest from them, which is to be just and virtuous. Moderation is the centre point between these two extremes. Every one of our virtues sits at the moderate centre of two vices that stray from it. And there's a lot of evidence that I could use to back this up, but I don't want to digress too much. The point is, is there can be two extremes, one of extreme negligence, let's say, and one of excessively doing something. You know, if we take fasting, for example, if we never fast or we don't fast when we're supposed to, this would be extremely negligent on one side. And then on the other side, if we say that we are going fast every day, even though the Prophet ﷺ never did it, this would be extreme in the other sense. Our goal should be to find that centre and always return back to it when we move away from it, to be in a place of hope and fear. Hope enough to know that we can be forgiven for our sins if we sincerely repent. And with that are conditions that maybe we'll cover in the future. But fear enough to know that our choices do come with consequences and our bad choices can come with punishments. Especially for those who do not repent and who do not fear or care about the consequences. This sort of remembrance will help us avoid these choices inshallah. And I think another important thing to note here is that the extreme is not what is normal within certain communities today. Let me just get that straight. Some people will look at niqabis, let's say, and they will say that that is extreme. But actually the best of women, the women around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would cover their faces. You know, so extreme is not based on the worldly standards, but based on the standards and examples given to us by the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah. So it's important that we research, that we know what that looks like, inshallah. If you have lasted this long, well done. We have a few more things to come and then inshallah, that will be it for today. But number four is surrounding yourself with good character. And what I mean by that is surrounding yourself with good people, taking in good content and taking yourself to beneficial environments, inshallah. What our eyes see and become accustomed to will be normalised to us. We'll be desensitised to anything that is not so good. And it's the same in regards to our ears, the same in regards to the company we keep, the environments we put ourselves in. What we do daily or often will determine the person that we become. So if we are putting ourselves in front of bad content or bad people, etc., we're going to become desensitised, it's going to become normalised and it's going to have an effect on the person we're trying to be. We want to be the best Muslims, right? Okay, it's going to take us some time, we're not going to get there tomorrow, no. But we start making better choices, increasing the good that we do, avoiding and decreasing the not so good that we find ourselves doing. You know, reconditioning ourselves. Now, as new Muslims, you'll no doubt have non-Muslim family and friends. I'm not telling you to cut those people off. Absolutely not. So please don't misunderstand. But what we can do for ourselves is prioritise what's important. To uphold the dignity and honour given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muslims. Seeking the advice through the religion. And to create boundaries for ourselves, ones that we are not relaxed in. This is how we keep ourselves right. And we try to have balance in the company we keep. We try to have balance in the content that we watch. If any negatives are surpassing that moderation that we were just referring to, it will no doubt have a negative effect. So just try and be aware of that, inshallah.
We mentioned earlier in the lesson that the best of examples is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore, we should study the seerah, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as a result, we'll get to know about some of the earlier generations as well and the lives of the righteous who are most definitely examples to us as well. A few books that I recommend regarding this are The Sealed Nectar, When the Moon Split, and a biography of the Prophet of Islam. And that one comes in two volumes, inshallah. We mentioned habit building earlier on, but I think a part of that is accepting that as a Muslim now, you are in a trainee mindset. And even with that comes balance. You're going to have to be patient with yourself sometimes and kind to yourself sometimes. But sometimes you need to push yourself. Don't be scared to push your boundaries. Sometimes you're going to fall off the horse. But what's important is that we recognise that we tried. If there is a need for tawbah, for seeking repentance, then we seek up repentance and we get back on the horse. We don't throw the baby out with the bath water. This is a lifelong journey. We just need to keep striving and keep pushing and keep having patience, inshallah, and we'll get there. And last but not least, we need to utilize supplication. We need to make more dua, inshallah. Nothing is too small and nothing is too big. There is no set limit on the amount of dua that we can make. In fact, the more, the better. Why? Because it shows that we are relying on Allah. We are seeking his favour and his guidance in everything. So we should ask the Almighty to make our character good and to help us in attaining the good that we're trying to achieve. One of the supplications that the Prophet wasallam used to make was, O oh Allah, make what is within me better than my outward appearance and make my outer appearance righteous. O oh Allah, I ask you for the righteousness of what you give to the people of property, family and children without being misguided or misguiding others. We have covered a lot of ground today. The homework, inshallah, I want you to take the references that I mentioned, the ones from the Quran and the Hadith. But I also want you to write a paragraph or two about what you could do using some of the information you have gained today, how you can implement it and inshallah work and better your character. If I've said anything wrong in this video, know that it's from me, my mistakes and need for knowledge, and any good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum.